um, let's just move on uh, to another to, to our next discussant. Let me introduce and a great pleasure to welcome um, uh, Etienne Coyette from the uh, DG Devco uh, in, in Brussels. Um, who he is the climate change policy coordinator. Um, over to you, Etienne. Thank you very much. Good morning to uh, everyone, and sorry for the late arrival, but trains in Belgium are not always on time <laughs> to get to the Eurostar. Sorry about that. Um, I was asked to uh, well share some views uh, with you this morning, and well, I probably present the EU views about these uh, topics that are currently studied in this uh, very interesting uh, project. So first of all, thank you for the invitation and thank you for all the study work already carried out uh, so far. This provides us with a very interesting uh, conclusion and recommendation, but they are quite challenging as well. Uh, you are probably aware that uh, at the EU level, we are currently uh, in the context of many, uh, many changes. Uh, you just said I am from DEFCO, which is new uh, service recently created on the basis of the old implementing DG and the old policy DG. So we are going to be uh, in the coming weeks at the end, finally working together, all the people uh, for example, in this case, uh, working around climate change rather than be uh, separated in different units. Uh, the other big issue about the context is the discussion, the current discussion about the uh, multi-annual financial perspective. So this is the kind of the EU uh, negotiation process to set up the financial perspective for the period 2013 uh, to 2020. And obviously, the climate finance in this debate is taking uh, a prominent uh, place, much more than for the previous uh, uh, debate uh, six years ago. And uh, the pledges made by the EU at international, international level are really there into the debate, and uh, it's, uh, it's a big challenge to, uh, to have a clear idea about how the uh, EU will be uh, addressing and be uh, come on, uh, achieving these, uh, these objectives. About the current context, we are currently, for example, spending uh, on development cooperation only here uh, around an average of 300 million euro per year. If you look at the 2020 uh, target, which is uh, 100 billion for the global community, and if you uh, calculate down to what is what has been pledged by the EU for the fast start finance using the kind of same key for repartition and then inside the EU, the 27 member states, the European Commission. That means that we would have to uh, increase from three or four hundred million per year to something uh, around uh, uh, two, two billion, depending on the, the key for calculation. And then some estimates are uh, far higher than, uh, than this figure. Most of the funding we are uh, providing as ODA is channeled through what we call uh, the geographic strategy. So it's country programs or regional programs. And then in parallel, we also have what we call the thematic programs. And there we have uh, an envelope for climate change as we do have for biodiversity, etc. So far, these envelopes are separated. And then in the discussions, we are also uh, looking at how we could have a more integrated approach uh, within these thematic, uh, thematic programs. Coming back to the national and regional programming, uh, so far uh, climate change has been integrated, but the process of integrating climate change uh, has actually started uh, during the implementation period. So meaning that in, uh, in 2002, 2003, we were probably not as equipped as we are today to uh, kind of screen the different programs. The challenges or the commitments made at international level were not that uh, stringent or taken into account. So this new programming coming uh, starting in 2013 is an opportunity for us to make sure that we better mainstream climate change into the, uh, these programs. And as regards adaptation to climate change, mainstreaming will be probably the main uh, or the, the 
the most important approach we we choose for for this <coughs> mitigation project is a bit of a mitigation uh, sorry is a bit of a different uh, approach because there are many links with uh, energy it's probably much easier to uh, bridge the gap with the private sector uh, when we talk about mitigation and there we are looking as, as well at uh, specific uh, tools and instruments in order to kind of uh, promote private sector investment. So this is about the, well, the EU approach regarding ODA. We also have uh, some part of the ODA which is channeled uh, through uh, the European Investment Bank and then the EU is already having several big uh, development banks within the member states. Uh, we will look uh, later what are the, the, the challenges. As regards the big sources of uh, potential, potential sources for climate finance that were highlighted in the AGF uh, report, uh, the Commission is uh, currently uh, preparing a staff working document which will be uh, presented in the, in the coming weeks to the, to the Council in which we uh, try to uh, bring the EU uh, reply to this uh, um, AGF uh, report. On public uh, finance, funding for climate change is obviously uh, in a difficult situation because of the financial crisis, we all know, and also because of the competing, uh, competing needs. Uh, obviously, we have these uh, uh, MDG uh, objective, the target of 0 0.7. We believe we need to maintain that, and there is some kind of a competition between the different families. And uh, for example, there is an increased attention to be given to uh, commitments made in uh, Nagoya last year for biodiversity. And if you move uh, away from environmental issue, you also have several objectives uh, regarding health or education, etc. So that's a difficult uh, situation here. As regard the carbon markets, uh, we have a very interesting situation uh, as the EU because we have developed the biggest uh, carbon market uh, so far. Almost 90% of the um, emission rights are traded in the uh, EU uh, ETS. The challenges here is uh, to uh, try to link this with other existing market and try to uh, steer the debate as much as we can uh, for these new uh, potential uh, markets so that they can be, ma be made uh, as uh, easily connectable, I would say, with the, um, with the EU uh, emission trading system. It was just mentioned the CDM, so we do believe uh, that uh, well, CDM is potentially interesting, but we all know that upon delivery, uh, most of the funding has gone to uh, some selected countries, and the problem is also we think uh, about the, 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 the complexity and the, the calendar, the long calendar for the for the procedure. So there is there is a, a lot of work to be done, and we are pushing for this in the in the negotiations. It's also a capacity problem accessing these carbon markets for developing countries. We, we have seen the case of Indonesia. It seems that the country is already quite uh, well uh, equipped with a lot of national expertise to deal with these problems. But if you look at LDCs and SIDS, which uh, in number are kind of the, the biggest share of the, of the family in our partner countries for development cooperation, there it's much more challenging for them. And uh, we, we really have to look at these issues uh, probably much more systematically than what we have done so far in our cooperation programs. As regards private finance, we do see it as a, obviously a, a very interesting uh, source for financing, but there the, the problem will be uh, how to make use of the existing tools in order to leverage or to promote or to uh, uh, yeah, promote the private uh, investment in energy or renewable energy, this is quite obvious, but there are many more sectors which could be uh, explored and for which maybe specific approaches need to be uh, to be developed. Um, but then again, the monitoring uh, <coughs> challenge is, uh, is, a, is a difficult uh, issue. How are we going to account and report on uh, private finance flows to uh, developing countries? 
And then finally, the, 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 the fourth uh, big um, element is about the development banks. Uh, I said in the beginning, we, we have a number of very important international institutions at that level in the, uh, in the EU. We do have, uh, counting with the member states plus the Commission, uh, a very significant number of uh, seats, I would say, and voting rights in the international institutions. And at least for us in the European Commission, we do believe if the EU has a coordinated approach uh, within this context, we have a unique opportunity here to kind of shape the international debate. But <laughs> you will see later that it's also a challenge within the EU to have a common understanding of these, uh, of these challenges. Um, now maybe to react about some of the um, comments that were made, if I have some time, I don't know where I am with the... Uh, the planning processes, as you as you mentioned, this is a this is a key issue, and uh, we we mentioned, for example, the Napas and the Namas, and uh, they they we, we, we think they are still seen in uh, in our partner countries as kind of uh, self-standing uh, strategies or uh, documents or approaches, and then besides, you also find the national development strategy, and then you also have, as you mentioned, the disaster risk reduction strategy. If we could move towards more integrated approaches, that would certainly help uh, channeling uh, an increase, uh, increased funding towards these, uh, these strategies. But then it is also uh, something that we can say for us as, uh, as donors. We do have our climate strategies, we do have a biodiversity strategies, our health and disaster risk reduction and everything. So we do also have to uh, move yeah. towards a much more integrated approach to um, Towards this, and for example, in the in the Pacific region, uh, we we follow with a lot of interest, for example, the emerging of uh, disaster risk reduction and uh, climate change adaptation uh, strategies. Uh, that's an example that uh, that could be uh, that could be followed. The absorption capacities in uh, in partner countries is often mentioned. Uh, I think this is true. Uh, in DEFCO, we concretely experience, uh, for example, very often delays in the programming process just because we are not able to find, uh, um, I would say, available, how would you come on, available um, colleagues in the national governments, <coughs> governments simply because they are overloaded. Usually, in many countries, you have one person dealing with climate change. And you can find this person in the negotiations, in the regional processes, on the programming for climate change. And then on top of that, <laughs> you would ask him many, very often to have a separate, a, a specific format for the European Commission, another one for the FID, another one for USA. And then you can see the challenge that is, uh, that is there. So, and this challenge is really uh, a, a very, well, very concrete problems but also a very, very difficult one, because this means that uh, both uh, European Commission, but probably even only at the, e at the EU level, if we could move towards uh, more harmonized uh, programming processes, that would already be um, a huge step uh, forward. Um, capacity building, as I mentioned, uh, the EU in the UNFCCC negotiations, we are kind of promoting the, the idea that capacity building needs to be systematically integrated in the other uh, approaches on adaptation, on, uh, on technology, on, uh, on mitigation, etc. But that is also something that we should do more systematically in our own uh, aid uh, programs, because this is not yet the case. We do organize training workshops, seminars, conferences, etc but it's still focused on climate change and not really integrated into the, uh, the other uh, processes. Now with the reorganization in the European Commission, with the next uh, financial perspective, uh, we, we are in, in this phase where many things are being discussed and uh, we have an opportunity there to better shape our um, uh, approach towards uh, climate change uh, finance to meet the challenge. We have met the fast hard finance challenge and I think we have the possibility to uh, meet the long-term uh, challenge for uh, climate finance. But then the different tracks are quite clear, the different uh, 
points on which we have to work are quite clear as well, but it is, uh, this is quite a challenge and uh, I think we need to, uh, to move forward and have, uh, well, we, we always advocate for that, but have a more uh, integrated EU approach towards these, uh, these issues. <coughs> Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to reply to any questions or to focus on some of the points I've, uh, I've quickly covered for you this morning. Okay. Thank you very much. Great, many thanks, Etienne. Any questions?